Tracy. Welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before. Or welcome back if you watch my videos. And I thank you so, so much if you do. I love to upcycle clothes and turn ordinary thrifted items into fun, wearable pieces of art sometimes. Sometimes just fun, funky clothes that you would never expect from just sort of ordinary thrifted items. Well, these aren't so ordinary. They're kind of a satin pair of pants. This is what we're working on today. I found them in the men's section and I was just like, who donated these? I'd like to know this guy. <laughs> but I almost didn't get them because these are a 2X and I'm about a 4, 6 and I just thought, oh, that would be a lot of taking in. But these are striped and satin and I just loved them and I couldn't pass them up. Well, I got a brainstorm. I'm going to make a two-piece shorts outfit with these. And so that's what the tutorial is about today. So let's get started. The first thing I need to do is decide how long I want my shorts. I'm going to cut these into shorts and I know myself and I know I want a four inch inseam. But if you're not sure, just go to a pair of shorts that you already have and that you love the length and just measure from that crisscross seam in the center to the end of your shorts and see what that length is. So what I'm going to do now is I want a four inch inseam and then I'm going to add three quarters of an inch for a seam allowance. And I'll go to this crisscross where these seams crisscross go to the center and I'm going to measure down four and three quarters of an inch. And I have a piece of chalk so I need to mark on the black part, the black stripe. So I mark down four and three quarters of an inch for me, that's my length. And then what I do is I go from this mark. Let me move this up. Ooh, I have to move it way up. These are so long. <laughs> okay, so I go to the bottom with a tape measure, yardstick. I go to the bottom of my pants and I measure up to that mark I made. And I get 26 inches from here to here. So now, with that 26 inch figure that I have in my head, I'm going to the bottom of the pant leg again and measuring up 26 inches and making a mark. And I'm doing that because that will be my cut line and I will go around each pant leg front and back and go to the bottom of the pants and mark 26 inches. Now, with jeans, sometimes I just cut straight across, but I want these to be a little more precise and a little more tailored looking. So I'm just going to be very careful and mark that out on both sides of each pant leg, 26 inches up all the way around. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but I have little chalk, chalk marks all the way around. And now I'm just going to carefully cut and follow that line. And I'll do that all the way around. I'm just cutting one layer at a time. I'll do that all the way around this pant leg and then all the way around that one. Okay, so now I want to take these in on the sides so that they fit me. And in the past, I would turn these inside out and put them on and take a pin and pin each side to see where I want it. But that's never been like super accurate for me. And I have a better way I'm going to show you. I have a pair of high-waisted jeans that I really love how they fit. So I'm going to use these as my pattern to basically just trace around. So I will line up the crotch area. I have my shorts inside out and laying flat. I took some time and made sure they were nice and flat. And I'm just going to lay these jeans on top. 
And I have these inside out also because I'm going to use a marker, marker and I don't want to accidentally mark up the right side of my jeans because I love them too much. So, and I will just get that nice and lined up. And I'm going to take a little bit of time with this and I'll come back. Okay, so I have them lined up where I want them. And I'm just going to take a Sharpie and trace these. Okay. And now I'm just going to take my straight pins and I'm going to pin all the way along that line. It's a little harder to get in at the waistband here, but I'll pin that pretty securely because I don't want that to shift around because I want to stitch a nice straight line. So I'll just pin all the way down this line and all the way down this line. Okay, so now I have the sides all pinned and I'm going to go to my machine and sew these. And I will use white thread. I could have used black or white, but I just looked at what the original pair of pants was and it was white thread, so I'll just use that. And I'll do a fairly small straight stitch simply down each, this line, down each side of the leg. And I will double, I'll go down twice just for extra durability. Okay, so now I have both sides all sewn and I tried them on and they fit perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece off. And I will just stay probably a little less than a quarter of an inch next to that line. Okay, and so now I just need to give these a nice finished hem. And you can double roll yours if you want, do a double rolled hem, which means just fold it over once and then fold it over again and it has, makes it nice and finished on the inside. Well, I'm not going to do that because number one, it's very time consuming, I feel. And then number two, it tends to kind of get misshapen when I do that. And so I'm going to make this very simple for myself. And I am going to go around the very edge of the bottom of each shorts leg with a, zig, a white zigzag stitch. And it'll just be an average zigzag stitch. And what that'll do, that'll just finish the edges and I will only have to fold it up once. And then we'll have a nice looking zigzag stitch there. So I'm going to go to my machine and do a zigzag stitch all the way around with white thread. And now I just want to fold it up once, three quarters of an inch and make the hem. And so what I'll do is I'll start anywhere. It doesn't really matter. And this will I will measure. I mean, I talk a lot about I eyeball things and I don't measure a lot, but I want these to be nice and crisp and professional looking. So I will measure. This might take a little bit of time. So I know that's three quarters of an inch right there. And I'll stick a pin. And then I'll just go over a few inches or a couple inches and measure three quarters of an inch again and stick a pin. Now you can press this three quarters of an inch and then pin it or just press it, but this satin is not very iron friendly. The creases don't won't really stay in there nice, so I'm going to pin this first. Okay, so I have the bottom all pinned and I had this off when I did the zigzag stitch, this front plate, and I'm going to leave it off for sewing the hem and I will leave them inside out when I sew 
and I will just slip one leg at a time over the arm of the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm going to stitch two rows here just to make it look more finished. And so the first row will be the lowest one and I'm going to line the edge of my shorts right up to the edge of my presser foot right here. And I will just do a fairly small straight stitch and go all the way around each pant leg this way. Okay, so I have the first row sewn and I still have it next to my presser foot to show you. Now there's a line just a little bit over, the first line over from the presser foot. I'm going to line my next row up with that line and sew all the way around both pant legs. Okay, so now the shorts are all done. And here's what the hem looks like. Now I told you on my machine it's one over. On yours it might be two over to sew that second row, but whatever one is about a quarter of an inch. And then on the inside, this will be a kind of a raw edge on the inside. You know, if you have a serger or or whatever, so that doesn't bother me. But super cute so far. Okay, before I start the top, I'm just going to give these shorts a nice press, that side seam that we did, and then I'm just going to press the hem. And like denim, I probably wouldn't protect it with a tea towel, but any other fabrics, I typically lay a tea towel over just in case, you know, you don't always know how the fabric is going to work with an iron, and you don't know what's on your iron all the time, so... Just going to give it enough, a nice little press. Okay, so now I wanna make the top. And I have these two wide pant legs left after cutting them off the shorts. And this is what I'll use to make the top. And my top is going to be elastic around the chest. And it will just kind of flare out a little bit. And it can be a little shorter because my shorts are super high-waisted. So the top will be a little shorter than normal. But I can't do a crop top. I don't want to show my belly. So I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so I just had my two pant legs laid out here. And I want to cut the side seam open just one on each pant leg. And I've already done done it to this one. That just gives me a nice piece of fabric. Now I'm going to cut one side seam open on this pant leg and it doesn't really matter which side. Okay, so I just have the two pant legs here cut open and what I'm going to show you, I'm doing on both pieces of fabric, but I'm just gonna show you on one. And I decided I have a nice finished hem here and I am just going to leave that as the bottom of my top. It'll save me a lot of work. So I'm going to go measure with my yardstick or my tape measure, it doesn't matter. Go down to the bottom of that and I'm going to measure up 17 inches. And I will just do that all along here until I have enough dashes to give me a cut line. Okay, so I have my marks all done and I will just cut along there. All the way across and then I'll do it to the other piece of fabric we have. Okay, so I have my two pieces cut 17 inches tall and now I am going to sew this together to make it one long piece. And all I'll do here is Put right sides together. I'll have this lane where I can see the stripes and I'll put this over top 
And it really doesn't matter what side I sew on, whether it's this or this, but I only want to sew on one side. So I will just take it to line it up and I won't even pin. I don't usually pin when it's just a straight shot like this. I'll line it up and do a fairly small straight stitch all the way down. Okay, just a quick tip here. Start at the bottom when you sew and not at the top because it's more important that the bottom lines up than the top. And I'm just using about a quarter inch seam allowance on this. Okay, so I had that all sewn together and I went to my ironing board and I put a tea towel over top and just pressed that seam that we just made. And now, this is what it's looking like so far. And I just want to add elastic at the top. Okay, so I have some leftover elastic from when I made a bunch of masks and it's a quarter inch. And so what I want to do is I just want to measure it around myself and see how long I want this. Now, I want the elastic at the top of my chest, kind of like a tube top. And I will stretch this a little bit to where I feel like it would be comfortable if I was wearing a tube top. Just enough stretch so it's not going to fall down, but not too much where it's going to be uncomfortable. And for me, That's about right there. And I'll cut it and I'll measure it and I'll tell you how long my piece of elastic is. Okay. My elastic is 27 and a quarter inches without any stretch. Okay, so I'm gonna set my little piece of elastic aside for a minute and I'm going to make the hem at the top of the top. <laughs> okay, so we already have a hem at the bottom that was already the bottom of the pant leg. And I am just folding this over three quarters of an inch and pinning it. And I'm measuring because, like I said, I want this one to be a little bit more tailored. And I will do that all the way across the top. So now I have the top all pinned. And I will go to my machine and I will stitch that shut. Now we're doing the elastic we're not doing it inside of a tunnel. We're sewing it on the outside. So we don't need to save space for, you know, slipping, threading elastic through. Okay, so I will take this to my machine and I want to stitch not close to that line. I want to go half an inch up from this folded edge. I will go half an inch up because the elastic will go right over top of that line and that's why it's not finished because this will finish it off basically. So this will eventually go there, but for right now, I'm just sewing half an inch up from that fold all the way across and a fairly small uh, stitch length. Okay, so I have it all stitched at the top. So I knew these pant legs would be big enough for a top for me, but maybe I should tell you what the measurements are. So they're a tapered leg, the pants, so it's sh shorter length at the top than it is at the bottom. So at the bottom line is 53 inches, and at the top it's 44 inches long, just for a reference. Okay, so now it's time to add the elastic. and. We are going to add it to the back side. This is the underside of the top and give it sort of a sheared effect. And how you do that is when you sew elastic to get a sheared sort of effect, you stretch it as you sew it, as you put it through the needle of the sewing machine. You stretch it and sew it. Okay. And you know, you could just wing it and put the elastic on, stretch it and sew, stretch it and sew. But what I have found, if you're not a little more careful, and I'll show you exactly what I do, you could have it stretched way too much here and end up with like a tail at the end. And what am I going to do with that? So I try to be a little more precise with it. And what I do 
Let's go find my pins. So hold on just one second. Okay, I'm back with my pins. <laughs> so I am going to take one end of the elastic and we are going to stitch right over top of this unfinished edge right here. And that will finish the edge for us. So that's the area I'll be sewing. I'll lay it right on top of that unfinished edge and sew right along there. Okay, but so how I pin it is I'll just lay it on one end and stick a pin in it. And I'm just going to go kind of the wrong way with my pin because this is so narrow and it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to take the other end and pin it to the very opposite end of the top of the shirt. Right on that unfinished edge there. Now, I'm going to find the center of my top, which is about right there. It doesn't have to be super exact. And then the center of my elastic, and I will pin those together. Now I gotta make sure I didn't twist my elastic. No, I think I'm good. Okay, so now we have three pins in. Now I'm going to find the center between the first pin and the middle pin of the fabric and then the center of the elastic. And I'm going to pin that together. This just keeps it balanced when you're sewing so you know you won't have like a gob at the end or too much up here. And so you'll just stretch from so from pin to pin, oh, my pin popped out. So when I go to my machine, you can even put another pin in between these two if you want. But when I go to my machine, I'll stick this side in the machine, stretch this and sew. And then I know this will be even. And then when I get done with that, I'll find the next pin I'll stretch that and sew. And I'll do that until I'm completely to the end. I'm at my machine and I'm going to use a fairly small straight stitch. And so I'm just sticking the one end with the elastic and the fabric underneath of my needle. And I'll go forward and back to get it started. Okay, and now I'm going to grab this pin, because that's my next one, and I'm going to stretch that. And you'll need to kind of grab it up here so that you don't pull it out. You know, so it continues moving forward basically because you're pulling on this end. And then when I get to this pin, I'll take that pin out and grab the next pin, stretch it, and go. Okay, so here's what it looks like all shared at the top. Looking cute. All right, now I want to sew it together to make the top. So I will just fold it over on itself, right sides together. I'll line up the remaining edge that we need to sew. And I won't pin this or anything, and it won't be too tricky down here. You just kind of line up the elastic. And try to make sure the elastic's together when you get towards the end, but start at the bottom, because it's more important that that lines up than the top if there's a slight miscalculation in the length of the fabrics. Okay. So I'm just going to go to my machine, do a small straight stitch, starting at the bottom, about quarter inch seam allowance, all the way down. Okay, so I have it all sewn together. And it is done. I am going to go press that last seam with my iron that we made, and then I'll put the outfit back on again and show it to you. Okay, so here it is all finished. Super cute.
Now you can crop your top. You could put elastic at the bottom. You could add straps. You could add ties. Just have fun with it. Thank you so much for watching.